So I'm going to read our blurb. Ready? Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law GLC 30A18 and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Hubbardson Board of Library Trustees will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequate, adequately access the proceedings in real time via Zoom. In the event that we are unable to do so best efforts, we will post on the town's website a comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So it's 714, call meeting to order. So, um, so we don't have a ton of things on our agenda. And um, Chris did send out the library plan, which I appreciate. Um, and I hope that everyone got some time to read it over. Um, and this would be a good time for Chris to talk and anyone ask questions or um, review whatever we might need to talk about for reopening the library. I'm okay. feeling like no one can hear me. I can hear you. Oh, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, do you want me to start? You know, just basically, I mean, I, I passed it up, I sent it out to everybody. So, but to summarize, uh, we're looking to offer curbside pickup starting yeah. June 15th, uh, probably two days a week, Mondays and Thursdays. Gabby and I will work opposite shifts to, my, to maximize social distancing. Um, if it goes well with the curbside pickup, and we're hoping to maybe it's a beginning of July that we can start offering uh, limited access to the library. Uh, there would be no toys. Uh, you wouldn't be sitting down to just hang out at the library. You would just come in, get your books, and head out. Uh, we would have uh, book carts set aside so that if they picked up a book, they didn't want to take it out, they could put it off and we could put it into quarantine. Um, book drop has been open, so people can still return their items. And uh, we have purchased boxes so that we can quarantine anything in the drop box each time we go in with enough to replace as needed. Um, I'll make note of the fact that people who do return their, uh, their items will have to wait uh, um, three to five days, depending on the routine uh, that we decide on as we we'll check them in. Um, we have a plastic, uh, I'm sorry, a plexiglass sneeze shield. I've ordered masks, I've ordered gloves. I, so what else have I ordered? I can't even remember what I've ordered. Um, um, ordered more bags because the ones I have right now are plastic and apparently paper is better. So I'm waiting for those to come in. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, wait, let me scroll down on my other computer because that'll tell me. Uh, story time will stay online until further notice. Summer programs will be offered as a virtual program or rescheduled for a later time. Uh, a lot of the programmers already have it as, as a virtual thing. so. They're, they're already uh, ahead of the curve on that one. Um, the one thing, oh, the outside spotlights are on in the library and I can't find a switch to turn them off and it's driving me nuts. I'm sorry. Uh, finally, uh, all of our accounts currently have a surplus and um, MBM, MBLC understands that libraries will be returning money back to their municipalities because we haven't used it. Um, but I do want to use up the items purchase account to avoid losing certification. Um, last things are our video engagements have been really well received. We've had over 1800 uh, people who have uh, clicked on it and engaged with it. Um, our unvideo posts are reaching uh, 1700 people and our total page likes is 620. So that was for the month of uh, May. And uh, that's it. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, Chris, is there a way, and, and maybe it, it isn't worth doing it, but is there a way to extend the due dates on, on the books that people have checked out so you don't have to worry about like clearing fines or 
doing anything like that? Like, is there like a way to do like a mass, like all the books checked out, change your due dates to August 1st or something like that? Well, um, as of right now, CW Morris has put a due date in for July 1st for every item oh. that has been checked out. Okay, um, perfect. So I, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And I okay. think everybody's going to be more excited about getting items out than they are about getting items back in. So. Mm -hmm. So I have a really poor connection. I hope you all can hear me. I heard maybe less than half of what Chris just said. Um, so I think you can all hear me. Do you want me to forward this on to everyone? I mean, everything that I just said. Do you mean the, I thought I emailed the plan to everyone. Yeah. Wasn't that okay. in one of the, in the email that I sent? Yes. Uh, yes, but this is a summary of what I've just I spoken. Have, so I might not have what I thought it. I did. Okay. Yeah, so so this is um this is already in there. Does anyone have any questions about it? Besides the uh, one comment, comment. I I, Hello. I see you all frozen. Can I speak two comments? Uh, yes, Hello. please do. Yeah. First Tom. Hello. Tom, yes. If you can hear us, we said yes. Can anybody hear me? I can't hear anybody now. Yeah, the connection's really poor. This meeting is. Okay, two, um, two suggestions. If you're outside, Joanne. Tom, we can hear you. Oh, good. Josephine, if you're outside, you might be a little far what? away from your, from your uh, uh, wireless device. And if you sit closer, sometimes it gives you a stronger signal. The second, device, the second question or the second comment is, I'll go over and look at the timers on those lights. There's a timer in the hallway and there's a timer down in the basement and I'll twiggle them and see if I can make the lights work right. Twiggling is a technical term. I didn't know there was a timer downstairs. I knew there was a timer in the hallway, but- uh, yeah, There was a timer right next to the electrical box next to the boiler. Oh, no kidding. All right. Um, I, I'll go look at it and take a gander if, if you don't. Do you know how to twiggle? I can figure out how to twiggle. <laughs> okay, good. Well, give it a try. All right. And no, uh, no question, but I'll just say feedback. Um, the story time, again, town admins, police chief, Ryan, et cetera, to read books was awesome. Yeah. So, oh, I agree. And the wonky donkey was just fantastic. Oh, thank you. I, I was very proud of that one. I managed not to crack I guess out. To say all the words and not mess it up. So I was very proud of that. <laughs> so we loved it. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris, another, another comment, Chris, was thank you for sending out the letters regarding the scholarship. Oh, you're welcome. Is it, is it, um, did we give enough time so that I can uh, post that on the Facebook page and the uh, website? Oh, I, I think so. It's been uh, a week. Okay. Week in a couple days. Then I will do that. And they find a pen. Okay, my connection is better. I can hear everyone now. Are there any other questions or anything that anyone wants to talk about in regards to the library opening or the plan? Well. I, I don't know if I can chime in, but I, I think it, it sounds fine, but I mentioned to Chris, it would be good to have, you know, if we agree with this, it would be good to have some, you know, kind of instructions for patrons to know, um, you know, I guess that would be the next step. Because I'm, you know, I mean, it's pretty clear in there, but just, you know, step by step, how can they hold, put a book on hold or whatever you're, you're going to call it for the pickup. Absolutely not a problem. I've, uh, I'm, I'm addressing that as a, so by the, I will have a final draft and I'll send it out to you guys so you can see it. Cause do you mostly use the Facebook page or the, I mean, do you think people probably use that more than the library page? Uh, that is a good question. I did not check the, uh, I didn't check the numbers on the library webpage. I mean, yeah, the website. Um, I will find that out, but I think that uh, the interactiveness of Facebook is uh, a little bit better than the rest of it, but I will put, I'll make sure I post it on both of them. Okay. 
Maybe should we move on to minutes? Question, were May minutes ever sent out? I didn't see them. Okay. I didn't receive them, yeah. We'll talk about the main minutes next time. And I am taking notes. I don't know if anybody else is. Can you send me um, that when you're done? I will. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't receive the May minutes. So we do have the March minutes and the April minutes. So hopefully there was not much in the April. We didn't have quorum in April, if I remember correctly. Correct. Tom and I was were there. Um, so the March minutes everyone get to review those it's been a while so okay so then i i guess let's make a motion to accept the march minutes or is does anyone want to discuss any of it make any updates or changes okay so um, make a motion we accept the march minutes as written perfect. all second i guess everyone we in have favor to do, all in favor i think we have to do the uh, motion with our voices we can't just wave hands so i'm um, yes okay um let's see um tom how do you vote yes morgan yes connie yep and i vote yes josephine okay so mm, um no one opposed um, stains i make a motion we pass the april minutes they're, they're pretty skimpy they're Okay. Uh, an announcement of no meeting, I think. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. So. Um, I vote yes. Morgan. Yes. Connie. Yes. Yes. Okay. No one abstained. Um, okay. So road race update. Yeah, so Mark emailed me over the weekend because um, this is about the time where we start to think about uh, planning the road race and talking about whether or not we should actually do it. Um, so uh, he, there's a couple of, of points I think we're a little bit worried about. Um, one is, you know, a lot of times our sponsors, like we rely heavily on our sponsors uh, to help raise the money. And given that many of our sponsors have been out of business for like two or three months, like, is it right to go and ask them for money? Mm -hmm. So a little bit of concern about that. Um, I also have a little bit of concern about probably social distancing um, and how you, we would manage a race in September, um, keeping people apart. So Mark was leaning a little bit, suggesting that maybe we postpone the race until next year. And so kind of pretty much cancel it for this year. But we wanted kind of feedback from the from you all about what your thoughts are about that. I mean, it's something we've been doing for like 23 years. We probably could figure out the social distancing part. So if we wanted to do it, it'd be maybe more like a like let's do it as a, a feel good community thing, knowing we aren't gonna make a lot of money off of it. Um, but or do we think it's more prudent to to postpone it? Um, can, um, is Mark available to be spoken to uh, about this? Uh, I don't think tonight, no. I am going to report no. back to him. Or... Not tonight, but um, if, if we could somehow raise enough money just to cover the costs without trying to raise money to add to the um, fund. Can you repeat that? Raise enough money to cover costs. Um, that would be t-shirts, water, I don't know, food, bananas, whatever they have over there. And uh, not try to um, petition or ask the um, faithful sponsors of this for any money because of the reasons that were just stated. Tough year. But if we could cover costs, we could at least get t-shirts printed and um, have a walk perhaps or do something to deal with the um, spacing of people um, don't have a gang start have a individual walking starts um, something like that um, it's not too much fun to run with a mask on but um, 
I, I'd like to hold the possibility open. I, I hate to see it canceled as just one more event that we kind of throw overboard in this in this climate. I'd like to see something like that um, happen, even if it happens under unusual circumstances or with the unusual conditions. How does everyone else feel? I am a little bit hesitant. I think it is one of those things of it's up in the air. The Boston Marathon has been uh, canceled for this year. It was initially postponed until September. Um, I do think that there was careful consideration and that there is careful consideration with regards to the sponsors and even questioning the number of people that would want to come out. Um, I think that we all have the desire of wanting to get back out, but I think there is still, until there's like a great vaccine, um, I think it's going to be a while before we can hold the group activities and the feel of having, even if it's a small run or walk with different heats of being released, I don't know that it would have the same effect of feeling like we're coming together if we have it staggered out. And then there are implications of if we do stagger all the different walks and runs, what would be the impact for the community as far as closing down the roads, et cetera. So that's another consideration to throw out. They're good. They're good considerations. Mark also yeah. mentioned that um, that using the school as a staging area might not get approved mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he, and whether or not he's actually talked, investigated that, or if he's just you know speculating what some issues we might run into could be. Um, but that was in his email. So he's worried about businesses and he's worried about the, using the school as a staging area. Um, and I'm worried yeah. about like but all that and social distancing. So, um, yeah. So I mean, it sounds I, I like kinda... the road race committee prefers to post more, cancel it for this year. I think Mark feels like that. I know you're I'm, talking, but I can't I can hear be, you. I feel like Mark feels like that. I. I can maybe I can be persuaded because I okay. do I have, I go back and forth on it because um, it might be nice just to do like a feel good thing for the community um, and I would say even if we did we wouldn't do t-shirts like just you know like lower the registration costs just just do a run like just enough to, like maybe ten dollars instead of twenty five just to cover cost of like food um, but I don't know if it's the responsible thing to do like yeah at this I mean. September is a long way off, but in order to plan it, you know, we have to kind of figure it out now. So I mean, that's kind of, I guess I'm very wishy-washy on it. A feel-good way of possibly doing it um, at an almost no cost is to welcome the runners to do it on their own in that we would give them recognition and kind of pull, say a, we come up with a hashtag hub library race um, number 24, et cetera, mm -hmm. or for 2020, um, practicing social distance, do the walk run on your own. Um, and we can't wait to see you for the next year. That would be a way of kind of holding on if in the instance, and I feel for you, Connie, I would be on the fence too. I'm, I, I'm like, what do you do? Um, so without getting rid of it completely, a last ditch effort is to ask people to do it on their own. And if you have runners running on their own, there wouldn't be as much implication of needing police and having to shut down the road for a while, uh, security, or even using the school. I know Hubbardson Center has been very cautious um, in, in speaking with the principal. She's concerned about even setting out um, the lost and found items and having a crowd and how to manage that and how to manage returning school items to the elementary school, it was a lot more complicated than it seemed to be for the middle and high school students. I, I think that do it on your own concept is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, they, could, they could sign up to do it, do it at their leisure over a you know, couple week period and, uh, and then say, send something in that says they did it and um, we give them a coupon for a t-shirt or something. I don't know. We print up some t-shirts or 
or proportional to how many people uh, signed up? And would we be able to distribute a teacher? That or maybe use it for the 2021 as a discount and incentive for them to come back in 2021. Oh, that's a very clever idea. <laughs> Put the hook in them. Um, well, did, did Mark uh, consider such a thing and are we going over old ground or is this a, a good new idea that we should bounce off Mark? It's an idea that I can present to him for sure, you know. That'd be great. So the idea of doing it kind of remote, does it get to the community feel? If like you can get on the Boston Marathon and people are like, oh, run it remotely and we'll send you a medal, like that would just be like, bleh. like, you know, you qualify for the, you know, or, you know, like I, it's a building community. I guess, or is it just like an extra hoop that we, we do something just to do it, you know? I think it's a hanging on strategy. It's not a uh, building strategy. It's an it's a attempt to maintain a status quo. Uh, there is an article at the runner, what exactly, what is that exactly is a virtual race? And apparently they've been going on since like 2013. Mm -hmm. um, so there are communities that do this where, you know, they just set the let the distance, um, they submit the money and the people do their run and, you know, that's how they do it. So uh, it, it, it's not a new, it's not a new thing to do. And it looks like uh, there are places that might be able to help you with it. What did you do, Chris? Look at a site? Yeah, I, I, I typed in what's a virtual race and uh, I, I went to active.com running in sports and it talks about it. I have run virtual races before, only it was always in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to do that. <laughs> well, that's, I, I think that's worth pursuing. I'm, if, if, it, if it is a thing that is invented already and we don't have to invent too much, um, I think we ought to at least pursue it one more meeting round and see what Mark thinks. And if it's still a uh, not worth the the risk kind of thing, then uh, I'm, I'm certainly not going to push it. But if it is a situation where it's just a little bit more work and it, and it can happen, I guess I'd be in favor of such a thing. OK, I can email. I mean, I can talk to Mark and kind of get his take on that. Would you look at that, web Connie? Would you uh, give him the link to that website? I'm I'm sure he knows about it. I'm sure he knows about it. Yes. So I'm sure. Yeah. So I'm sure he's aware. I think he. I think Mark really tries to think about this as a way to like raise money for the library, and that's where his focus is. You know. And so like, I think his initial reaction is like, if we can't raise. A decent amount of money for the library is it worth doing it you know so. well the, the, the people that contribute money might might look at this as a valiant effort and and contribute a you know a normal years a normal years amount yeah Another, i would not be comfortable calling anybody and asking them for money like i would not be comfortable doing that Mm -hmm. another option to get away with asking for money um i think the idea of awarding the uh, runners with a coupon for the next year, et cetera. Um, I, I think that is a great incentive to get them continued spirit with the run and the road race being an annual road race is mm -hmm. having it open and sometimes asking just simply for donations. So where sometimes runners would ask other people to back them, et cetera, um, and in lieu of uh, an actual entry fee, if we ask for donations and share that this year, we were able to award two scholarships. We're looking to continue to award scholarships um, from proceeds from the road race. I think we're still in good standing. We'd be able to award next year, even if we didn't raise any money, but people feel welcome or would like to donate to the library, they may do so and that we allow for donations. And if we, if we uh, acknowledge, without asking, but we acknowledge the many, the many parties that have uh, been sponsors over the years by maybe printing them on the front and the back of this coupon sheet, um, we can still uh, not ask them for anything but uh, recognize their 
pass contributions and encourage next year. I think that would be nice. There's been an awful lot of um, small companies and and really faithful year after year I've, uh, I've supported this. If, if you give a coupon for the next year, will that cut into the, um, you know, fees raised for the, I mean, will, will it affect, negatively affect the next year? I, I don't know how it's all set yeah. up. I mean, uh, yes, yeah, it would. But, but you're but taking remember, funds this year and you're applying it to next year, right? Yeah. Yeah, but most, a lot of the money comes from sponsors and what we'd be doing would be giving a coupon for the registration fee, not for the, the sponsorship. The sponsorship money would still come in mm. next year. Right, exactly. Yeah, so pretty much the registration fee covers um, the cost of the t-shirts and I, I think the food, right? And then pretty much all of the money that's profit is from the sponsors. For the most right. part, I, I have to look at last year's budget, but it, it's something like that. Like the registration fee really just covers the t-shirt and um, like maybe some snacks. Well, let's let's just explore it a little bit long, a little bit more because of, because a virtual race is an existing thing and we ought to be able to figure out some way to do it. Who knows, some donor might step up and help us. Yeah, I, yeah, people might, maybe donors would step up. I'm just not comfortable going out and like, hey, can I have money from you? That You've been closed for three months, but can you give me some money? So I I'm not you. comfortable doing that. I yeah. agree with you. We should leave the sponsors out of it and yeah. just go with individuals. Josephine, what do you think? I don't know. She's not muted. Nope. She's gone, actually. No, I can see her. Josephine, can you hear us? Can you? Oh, she's not in my grid. I'm, I'm here now. Oh, okay. Um, but I haven't really been able to hear most of the meeting. So you know how usually I'm not really that silent. <laughs> like right now, I can't hear any of you at all, and your screens are frozen. So I think it's my connection. We had a um, our Wi-Fi has been had been down on Tuesday. I don't know if you can hear me. Our Wi-Fi has been was down on Tuesday, and it's just not come back to its normal. Mm -hmm. So right now, I can't hear you, and your screens are frozen. So I would appreciate it if maybe give me a thumbs up, and someone else can um, do the talking for me just to move on to the next agenda well, item, if that's what we're up to. So it sounds like I'll reach out to Mark, talk to him about the idea of doing a virtual race, get his thoughts on it you know saying that you know we're not necessarily looking to make money but like you know the idea of if they complete the race you give them a coupon for next year's race and then some sort of having some sort of handout recognizing previous year's sponsors and maybe not even doing like t-shirts or anything like that does that sound reasonable yes yes okay then i'll reach out to him and get his feel on that and that might even be something like if he's not on board with it it might be something that like I, I or a small group of us can figure out on our own because there's not as much logistical work to it, you know, as like actually doing the race itself, so. Um, what I think I heard you say was Mark had concerned about its value with respect to the money raised. Um, did he have any other concerns? You so I, just, I just exchanged a brief email with him and so, he asked me to talk to you all about what your thoughts are about the meeting, about the road race. So now that I have your thoughts on it, I can go back and talk to him about it. So. Super. And then come back in July and kind of rediscuss recommitting. Yes. Okay. So with that being um, said, are we ready to move on to the historical artifacts? Um, so I think you all can hear me right now. Is that true? Okay, I'm, fro I'm frozen again. I just wanted to add, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, along the lines of the coupon for next year, um, if, you know, I think that people don't mind just a plain old certificate with their name on it or something like that. So if money is a concern at all that 
I don't know if people need a registration discount if the money really does go to pay for the t-shirts and the bananas and the food. So I think a certificate with people's names on it, and I don't mind doing that at all. Um, just sitting down and printing those out and mailing them to people or having them pick them up the library, whatever's right, is okay too. So no, I don't necessarily think the coupon, um, I, I don't necessarily think it's an incentive for people that they'll come back year after year anyway. And it could um, cause an issue for t-shirts or so. I don't know if you all heard that, but I think you did. I see eyes moving. Mark, Mark has massive so, mailing list names and addresses and everything. Okay, so if someone else could move the meeting on for me, I can't hear any of you. Um, if you can hear me and you're ready to move on to the historic um, artifact, the Lou Gagne Morgan, um, go ahead and take over if you can hear me. So if you can hear us, I put a couple things into the chat. We heard you, Josephine. And um, if everybody's all set, yes, we can move on to historical artifacts. Um, did everybody get to see Josephine's email with the uh, pictures from Lou? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what we should do for discussion. I mean, with things shut down, I would say that we could reach out and say, uh, we heard you, we see your artifacts. What do the trustees think? Um, I think if it has to be done by remote, and we've had some success with things like story hour and whatnot, uh, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to put together a, uh, a little slideshow and we could have a meeting and he could bring his a virtual meeting and he could put his slides up and do a talk as if he was standing in the library with a slideshow. I, I presume that's where he was headed. I've never really heard his objectives. Has anybody else reached out to Lou or heard his objective, uh, what he's looking for? Are the trustees interested in engaging with Lou and having a collaboration with the library? Because I think that was it, is that he was thinking of collaborating with the library and um, now I need to go back and see what it was. It was a library pin? It, it seemed like he was interested in having people allow him to look for stuff where they live. Well, that as well. Um, he has gone around the town and elsewhere. Um, I think that would be an outcome, but a, a going into the thing, I think he was uh, genuinely interested in presenting what he had found and what he knows. He's done my yard and the, the property behind my yard. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, he's just an interesting guy to talk to. He's mm -hmm. a very, very nice guy, but also is knowledgeable about the stuff he turns up. Yeah, and he had a historic Hubbardson Library tag. Hmm. So I think he wanted to reach out to the library with regards to that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you anybody don't... provide a little bit of like, I, I saw all the pictures and I saw like some of the exchanges, but I didn't fully understand what the concept was. Is it like, did he just find one Hubbardson Library tag or did he find a bunch of stuff related to Hubbardson Library or is it more just about finding stuff in Hubbardston. I, I guess I don't fully understand what the goal is or what the purpose is. Well, my understanding is that he's found a lot of different items and it is beyond just Hubbardston. The way it kind of connected with the library was specifically that Hubbardston library tag. Um, he has found other items in Hubbardston as well. Um, so perhaps as a, as a, a I think one of maybe the first steps is that we could reach out to him. One of us can reach out to Lou and see what exactly he would like to do with the library um, and make contact and say, hey, we saw your posts online. The library trustees are aware. Um, it looks like an interesting collection. What would you like to do? And then represent in July and find out. Yeah, ask him for a two paragraph proposal. Yeah. You know, what, what are your ideas? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? 
I don't mind doing that. Does anybody else want to make contact? Tom, you've had him in your backyard. I can, if, it, if it's uh, something you want me to do, I'll do it gladly. If you're interested. Can you send me his uh, email? I don't think I have it. And I don't want to go bang on doors. So. I'll see what I can get you, yeah. I think I at least have a phone number. I'll see what I have for an email for him. In all those photographs, was one of the many items displayed this library device? Chris, what is a library tag? <laughs> I wish I could hear this. I have to do, I knew, um, it, it, it's apparently it's metal because um, he found it, but aside from that, I have no idea. I'll try to get it out of them. Thank cool. You. People might be interested in, you know, learning how to, what to look for and things like that. You know, I think it could be an interesting, you know, like you said, a virtual program. And yeah, you might get some interest for him coming to, to help them as well. But just, I think, I think it's kind of interesting. He told me his daughter often throws pennies out into the yard for him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, what else we got? Um, that was it for the agenda. There are future points of discussion, but I think that that, uh, uh, that's probably a good breaking point. The future points of discussion were, um, ideas about ADA compliance, capital budget planning discussion, um, review strategy four of library trustees role on the board to be discussed. Um, it might help after Krista is, uh, voted in to include and have that as part of Krista's. And then um, discussion of upcoming events. Well, we have a town meeting coming up and we don't have any, uh, anything on the warrant, you know, asking for CDC money or any such thing. Um, I guess it's not CDC, it's some other, I guess CDC on the brain, <laughs> but it's some other organization here in town that uh, we often got money from, but the, money we've been awarded will carry forward to the next year. Um, Chris, do you know anything about Ryan's take on what the state's gonna do for us? Uh, I don't. Um, he got called, apparently he got called into active duty. Um, so we didn't have a meeting uh, on Wednesday for the staff. Uh, so I'm pretty much as much in the dark as you are, Tom. Okay. Is the meeting going to be virtual, the town meeting? I guess it will. Um, actually, he's, he's trying to organize it so it's outdoors. Ah. Um, it will depend on the weather. Um, but honestly, we've had, we've had some uh, pretty thin uh, town meetings before. So if it's inclement weather, they could probably fit a small group into the gym mm -hmm. and still adhere to social distancing. Mm -hmm. I understand they're reluctant to use the gym and are aiming for the rec field on a good night, as you mentioned, you know, yep. with, with wide space. The warrant is available if anybody wants to see it. Yeah. So should we set a July meeting and uh, would it be for July 2nd at seven? I don't know what day of the week that is, but it's near the holiday. It's a, the first Thursday. Okay, then the fourth is a Saturday? Yes. I can do it. So is there's a town meeting, but is that when the election is or the election is separate? I don't know the situation on the election. I, I haven't been following it. Now, did you get your papers in? Yeah, I did. Thank you to those of you that helped out with that. Well, didn't, really didn't it say, did the paperwork say when the election was? Yeah, I'll have be to. The 30th. The 30th. Forgive me for interrupting, but the election will be the 30th. I heard that from the town clerk. Okay, thank you. And the meeting, Christina? The meeting is the 23rd. Yeah, which is 
um, Tuesday, and then the 30th is a Tuesday. The second is the Thursday right after the election. Well, I can do the second. I just checked my busy calendar. Mm -hmm. Connie, are you available? Yeah, I can do the second as well. Josephine, I'll put it in the comments if you can hear. Um, Um, and then discussion, should we be holding it virtual? I vote yes. I would vote yes. I think so too. Then yes it is. <laughs> Very good. Um, we've made it through the agenda. Do you want to adjourn or do we have anything else to be done? Josephine is, uh, yes, to virtual. And I'm going to make a motion we adjourn. Okay, uh, I will se second. 754 second. Um, so all in favor of closing? I would uh, do a roll call. Roll call. All right. Yes. Tom? Aye. Um, myself? Yes. Um, Connie? Yep. Josephine, thumbs up if you can hear us. Ready to adjourn? adjourn. Um, she needs a web. I got it. So. All right. All in favor. All right. So 755, then I'm calling it. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks all. Everybody. Thank you.